Stories is a podcast dedicated to empowering women and sharing their occasional stories in order to help you become the best version of yourself. The show covers a wide range of topics to improve your business, body, mind, and soul. So welcome to Daughters Rise. I just started attending a Christian Bible-based church, and I joined their ladies' group on Thursday nights, and I found myself, we were going through the book of Ephesians, and we got to chapter five and six, and it's always been, always been a chapter that I struggle with, because it talks about submission, and it talks about how we are supposed to, as women, submit to our husbands, and that the husbands are the head of the woman, and God is the head of man. And that there's this hierarchy that has to be in place. And that just doesn't sit well with me. And I found myself struggling and I didn't, I I sat in this meeting of maybe 10 other women. And I kept thinking, Dina, just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. God help me just be quiet. (laughs) Because I don't know how to explain it to them, but it just doesn't feel right to me. I just feel in my soul that this is not the way God intended our lives to be. Something is desperately wrong here. Now, if I say that, does that mean that I feel like the entire New Testament is desperately wrong? I guess I don't really know. It's a sad thing when you are taught a certain way for so long and then you have to unlearn so many things. I love God and I think what he has created here is incredible. I think his support of each one of us individually is enormously incredible. I think that the giving of his son to die for our sins to help us to reach the possibility of an eternal life was an amazing sacrifice, don't you think? But the one thing that I struggle with is how women are viewed and how they are treated during, you know, during the reading of the New Testament, and I just really have a problem with it and I I don't like it and so that sent me on an enormous search to find answers where do women fit in and what I found was anger what I found was prayers at three o'clock in the afternoon that kept me from death what I found was priests who did not want to address the information that I was sharing with them. What I found was pastors who were more of the world that they maybe bet money on people or that they invested in things that they shouldn't invest in being pastors of a congregation, which made them fearful, which made them ungodlike, which made them, in my eyes, dangerous. Now, I forgave them all, you know, but this is my story. You know, I went to a priest. And I, I'm not going to share where all of these things happened or, you know, who these people are, because like I said, I have forgiven them and we've moved past it. Um, but the truth is, is that there are a lot of people out here running churches, and whether it be Catholic churches, whether it be Christian churches, whether it be something of a, a different, uh, a different sect. It could be Buddhism. It could be uh, just a general church related to health and and well-being 
could be a Christian Bible-based church. The people that are running the churches are not necessarily the most healthy people. I went to a pastor and I asked the, the, the not a pastor, a priest. I went to a priest and I asked the priest, I told him my story about the light within my body and how that happened twice and um, and that my life changed and I didn't understand what this was and what was my next step and what was I supposed to do and he never gave me any answers. He listened superficially, blew me off and gave me a prayer to recite at three o'clock in the afternoon that would keep me from dying. Needless to say, I was furious. I was absolutely furious furious to have lived my life, my entire life, believing that I was Catholic, being raised Catholic, being proud to be Catholic, to find, and I know this was just one instance and I get that, but at the moment I had tried various other places at the same, at, at the time too, and I wasn't able to get answers. I couldn't figure out where I fit in with God. You know, the Bible says one thing, the Bible, the Bible does not lift women up. And I needed to understand where that was coming from and where as a strong woman, as a, as a daughter of a very long line of strong women, where did I fit in? This was the hardest question and I still have not answered it. I don't know. So I do this. Maybe someday I'll get the answer. But along my path, you know, this this priest, oh, he was so frustrating to me. And I left the church. I couldn't, I just could not play that game. I was not going to wait for someone to take my life. That wasn't going to happen to me. I wasn't a pawn in his game of soul searching. So I left and I found a different church. I found a Bible based church that gave me the information and the, um, the healing, true full body healing that I needed. I had been attacked energetically when I was living in San Antonio, Texas. And, um, I know if you have never experienced that, it doesn't, it, you may not understand what I'm saying, but there are people that are able when they come together, um, much like the power of the church and the power of the congregation, when you come together, you know, the power of our word, the power of our prayers, they make things happen. Well, there are people that are able to do that and they do it for bad intention. And unfortunately that happened to me. I was attacked energetically over and over again. I had problems with my throat. Um, and I had problems with my knee and I was living on in an area that I had to walk many, many places. I was living in an area they didn't have cars. And so walking and riding a bike was incredibly painful every single moment of every single day because of this attack that I had undergone. And I couldn't get solace in the religion from the people that I was supposed to be resonating with, I found no solace. I found more fear. I found a fear-based priest who gave me a prayer to pray that I hopefully would not die. And then, um, however, I did listen to him and I did pray the pray prayer for a long time. I still walked away very, very jaded to say the least. Because I could see things changing within that church. I went a couple more times after I spoke to him and I could see things shifting. And I felt like he was on a search to harvest what was not his. And so I moved on and I left him behind. And so through my journey, I, like I said, I found this church. It was a Bible-based church and it was the pastor was um, fairly open but the parishioners were very open and I really enjoyed my time there. 
I was able to heal. They helped me heal. Their prayers um, helped me to release the energetic attachments that I had on my knee and in my throat. And it had not been for the parishioners of that church. I don't know where I would be today. I really don't. But then I moved on and I had to uh, go to another state. And so I went to another state and found another uh, Bible-based church. Because I don't, I don't think that I'll ever go to another Catholic church again. And that's just me. I'm not saying that it's bad. They're not. There's probably many priests that are wonderful. But unfortunately, in my desperate time of need, I did not find that... Um, I was welcomed with open arms and that still to today, I feel very jaded about, I was searching for a place that I could understand where women fit in, where I, like I said, as a strong woman, strong, very strong, self-sufficient woman, where did I fit in with the word of God? Because I started reading as much as I could. I started learning as much as I could about God, about, about his word. Or what's supposed to be his word. And it just didn't sit. Didn't sit well. And sometimes it still doesn't. <laughs> like on our Thursday night uh, class. I had to keep telling myself to just stop talking. Stop, just listen. Because some of the things that I feel as if I might know. I could be wrong. So I don't want to look silly. But that at the same time. If I'm not, I don't know how to get to people. I don't know the right words to say to people that would get them to understand and believe what I'm telling them. You know, I can't help but think that as little as even a hundred years ago, something could be written down and we would have no idea that it was changed, altered, or um, destroyed in, in any way. That the true meaning of it was destroyed. So who's to say that that the Bible being reprinted, being reprinted, being reprinted, that there's not some form of change that has occurred that we know nothing about? I can't help but believe that that's a possibility. And I know that maybe when when Christians hear me speak of that, they may think, Oh, she's not Christian, but that's not true. I love God. I love Jesus. I am in awe of what Jesus gave for all of us. The fear and the pain that that man had to have gone through, and he was a man in flesh and blood. What he had to go through, what they put him through, to the very last breath. They tortured him. But not because of anything he did wrong. It was all for us, for you, for me. And I know that maybe if you are not um, living in the word, if you're not walking alongside of Jesus right now, you, you may not understand that fully. But really what that means is that when Jesus gave his life for us that was the sacrifice at the time there were many sacrifices being made there were cows and sheep and various other things being made to the gods or god and god sent his son here to earth in order to make him a sacrifice so that the rest of us had the right and the opportunity to live an eternal life like he is. Now, that is the most ultimate sacrifice that I can ever think of. I, I'm just in awe of the whole thing. Um, and to have given me that opportunity is phenomenal. But then I have to sit and I have to wonder, well, are women included in that? Where do they fit into that narrative? Because when I read the New Testament, I don't find that. And when I read the Old Testament, I get angry because the women that they've listed in the Old Testament, 
you know, a lot of people want to use those stories as, as they are super uplifting. But when I, as a self-sufficient, strong woman who doesn't um, rely on anyone to take care of her in any way, shape, or form, and never have, I can't resonate with those stories. I look for bits and pieces, and I can find some small things here and there. But most of the time, I can't resonate with those stories. A lot of times, it's a submission to a, a, a man. And that is not how... That is not how this world always was. When you read back and you, you look at history, there are gods and goddesses who were in control and, um, of cities uh, across our, our entire world. So if women were in control of cities and they were deemed goddesses, then they are equal and have equal power to gods at the time, right? So how did we get to a point where men were now the head of the woman and that the god was the head of man? And um, I, I, I just don't understand. And then I met a gentleman when I, in my travels, I worked for him or with him for about a year. And he wore a turban on his head. And one day I was brave enough to ask him about the turban and what his religion was and was it related to his religion. And he told me all about his religion and how, um, and it, he is a, a Sikh. And Sikhs have just a purity about them. that They believe that there is only one God. They believe that God is without form or gender. They believe that everyone has direct access to God and that everyone is equal before God. And that a good life is lived as part of a community by living honestly and caring for others. And he would tell me stories of different things that he would do in his, in his life, in his community, to take care of others. And that um, the last one I'm reading here, it, it says empty religious rituals and superstitions have no value to the Sikhs. And I just loved sitting and talking with him. I could talk to him for hours because the truth of his religion was exactly what I was seeking. And I, what I mean by that is that when he said that everyone is equal before God, I said, well, where do women fit in? And he said, everyone is equal before God. He said, a Sikh woman has equal rights to a Sikh man. And that was not like what I was finding with Christianity. And it, what I found in doing a little bit of research in the Sikh religion is Sikhism, Sikhism is not reserved solely for men. And that's unlike Islam and Christianity. Women are not considered subordinate to a man. In fact, a Sikh baptism is open to both sexes. They call it a Khalsa nation. It's made up of equally men, uh, made up equally of men and women. And Khalsa is, comes from the Arabic word kahalas, which means to be pure, to be clear, to be free from, to be sincere, to be true, to be straight, to be solid. And that just gave me so much hope that if this is the case for the Sikhs, then it has to be true for, for all of us also that maybe there's some form of patriarchy that has occurred in the in Christianity that we cannot seem to get past that enslaves people still 
people being women. And I can't help but be frustrated with that, that we are now thousands of years into this. Thousands. And we are still fighting to be free. Now, I know that a lot of women are not going to agree with what I'm saying, and I, and I get that. I, t I totally understand. But when you are walking a path with Jesus, you start to see things and he opens your eyes to things that, that you don't normally see. You realize things that you don't normally realize. And I think that it is time for all religions to allow women to to evolve, to rise up and become one with God. That there should not be this hierarchy. You see, the Sikhs believe that truth is the highest of all virtues, and I agree. But higher still is truthful living. And I know that there are a group of people that are not living in truth not even close now I'm not saying that the system is not set up the way that it has been beneficial for many years I, I agree it probably has been and there's probably some form of reason that they thought that they should set it up the way that they did patriarchally speaking but it is time now to reconsider this. It is time to allow women the ability to be one with God as well. There has to be a way to allow that to occur. My fear is, is that it's become so publicly known how to practice this black magic rituals that allow someone to attach their energy to another person that we can't undo that. And so where does that leave people? Where does that leave women? That if we are subject to these attachments and to these betrayals, to these parasites, and like I said, maybe some mean well, others don't. So when we're attached to these parasites, how do we unattach? How do we, how do we connect to God? Where is that next step? What do we, we as women have to do to be able to rise up to, to meet the standards that man has set to be able to reach God? The New Testament talks about submission and, you know, a submission of women to their husbands, a submission, you know, to slaves, to masters. Right? How is that any different? How are those two sentences any different? If you expect slaves to be submissive to masters, what does it mean when you say to a woman she must be submissive to her husband? Our women are typically very powerful creatures. They are the ones that have that have led the 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 um, cities. Like we have, women have run cities. They're highly intelligent. They're very strong and extremely passionate. They have enormous leadership qualities. Did you know that? Ichel, goddess Ichel, was the head of cities. That, you know, not only was she goddess of midwifery and various other things, but she also was the head of a city. She's a Mayan goddess. It's the same with goddess Diana. Goddess Diana is the archetype for a very strong woman. She also ran cities. She's a Roman goddess that ran cities. 
and she's likened to Artemis, who was considered a Greek goddess, who I don't know whether Artemis ran cities, but I know that she was considered extremely strong as well, that had a, a strong voice, a strong presence. I just don't see where, how we go from these types of women to women who are subservient to man and how that's supposed to be. Because if that was what was supposed to be, wouldn't God have written that in the Old Testament? Wouldn't he have laid that out pretty clear? I mean, we can say whatever we want, and, and maybe this is <laughs> maybe this is stirring the pot too much, and I'm sorry if you are upset with anything that I'm saying. You know, some women are not going to agree with me, and, and that's okay. I just know that in the last six years, I have had spiritual attachments to my person by so many different people, men primarily. How? Why? I don't know. I can't get an answer. But they're there. And I would like to think that this might be their way of trying to help. But at the same time, if somebody is aware of your presence spiritually, don't you want to rethink that, that possibility and not attach yourself to them because if you if somebody's able to to feel energy if they're able to sense energy they're never going to sit well with somebody being attached to them does that make sense i think it's very important that we all start to see the truth in all of this to really start opening up those car those hard conversations that need to be had because something's not right and you know I, and my fear is is that if if somebody wasn't attached to a woman who does not have a husband does not have a father if they did not attach themselves to that woman that they don't become one of flesh because there's so much black magic out in the world and it's public knowledge I guess I can't find it but it's out there that are women safe because you have made this so public because I found this in no matter what state I've been in And that's sick to me. It's an overreaching patriarchal madness that should not be. It should not happen. Women should be free to pray. Women should be free to worship God. Women should be free to talk to God, to be with God, to hear God. There is no need for a man to be the head of a woman. And many church going folks might say, well, Dina, you know, you're reading too much into that. I don't think so. I think I'm finally getting honest about what I know. And what I know is not, not healthy for, for, the world you know you want your women to rise up but you've got to give them the power to do so you want your women to match you equally in the workplace okay great give them the power to do so you want women to rise up but we still call mary magdalene a prostitute even though the church itself says she's not. What do you know about that? She was never a prostitute. It was a male story 
that was put together by a, um, a priest or, or something, um, a pope, I think at the time, to discredit her. But yet still today, we hold on to that story, even though the church has come out with written documentation that she was never a prostitute. Ever. So right now I ask the men who might be listening to this. You've made these... For lack of a better word, spells so publicly known... What's next? What's next for the lives of your women? Because you can't have both. You cannot have a woman rise up, feel the depression of the energy that is put upon her, and expect her to still climb. That can't happen. So what are you going to do? How are you going to fix it? How are you going to retract all of the information that you put out there to all the men? What's next? And ladies, I'm sorry if you don't understand. And, and I know it's going to take a while for me to continue to talk about this because I still don't understand it either. Not fully. And I want to, but I don't. But I know that I've been living this really strange life for six years. And... <clears throat> It's been, it's been bordering a satanic life that I didn't ask for and that I don't support. I would like to see women empowered. I would like to see them in power. I would like to see that they are taking control again in the world, in religion, in life, in their families. We shouldn't need men to lead us. We are far better leaders ourselves. No offense, guys. But really. I don't even know what to name this. I don't know where I began with this whole thing, and I don't know how I ended up here, but here we are, and here's the truth. Here's the truth. You know, I have a pastor that I really love listening to, and uh, actually there's a couple of them that I really love listening to. I listen to their podcasts every morning, but they both talk about how the Bible is a spiritual book written by spiritual people for spiritual people, which is us. So I can't help but think that there's something missing here. As we go into this next phase of our, of our lives, of our world, collectively, I can't help but think that something's still or just not right. <clears throat> so what do we do? Where do we go? What's next? How do you free them from this burden? How do you free your women from this burden? How do you keep them safe in doing so? That's all. Thank you for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, please like and follow Daughters Rise and share the show with someone you know who could benefit from listening too. 